We have one more bank to look at, and it is the PCA, which we said is the Production Credit Association, which is a cooperative that lends to agricultural firms. We can see for the PCA that they're still borrowing $100, but the contractual rate is only 10%. It's still annual payments for two years. It's fully amortized, but in this particular case, we're going to introduce a fee, and we're also going to introduce the uh, stock requirement. Okay, the Production Credit Association, as I mentioned, is part of a cooperative that lends to agriculture. It has a pseudo relationship with the government. The uh, government, because of that uh, implied backing, they can issue bonds on Wall Street at a good rate, and that's the source of their funds. It's not deposits like another depository bank. Their funds come from farm credit system bonds. And to borrow money from this group, you have to be an owner. You have to be part of the cooperative, and thus you have to buy stock. So there's a stock requirement if you're going to borrow money from the PCA. And it's a non-earning stock, which means you pay it at the beginning and you get the same amount back at the end, but there's no interest that you earn on it. So that has to be factored in to the cost of the uh, debt. Rules currently in the PCA is for the stock requirement is the lesser of $1,000 or 2% of the loan amount. Just so that you can see what this means is if you took out a $20,000 loan, then the uh, stock that you'd have to purchase would be $400. And we get that number by taking the loan amount, the $20,000, and multiplying it by this 2%. Okay, 2% of $20,000 is $400. On the other hand, if you borrowed $50,000 from the PCA, your stock requirement would be $1,000. And we get that by multiplying the $50,000 loan by the 2% requirement. However, if you borrow something greater than $50,000, let's say $55,000, and we take 2% of the $55,000 is $1,100. But because it's the lesser of those two, then we're going to choose the $1,000. So anything over $50,000, the stock requirement remains at a level amount of $1,000. So the stock requirement that we'll say is S, is equal to this percent stock requirement times the principal. If the uh, stock requirement is below $1,000, which also implies that the principal amount is something less than $50,000. Where this big S represents the required stock purchase, the little s represents the percent stock requirement, and the P represents the loan principal. All of this can be culminated then in notation is that the stock requirement is the minimum of $1,000 or this percent stock requirement times the principal. This is just a restatement of the lesser of the 1,000 or 2% of the loan amount. I just collapse all of that into the simple mathematical notation at the bottom. Okay, we're gonna add another assumption to this. We're gonna assume that the PCA will allow you to borrow money to pay for the stock purchase and the credit fee. Okay, so you're not pulling money out of your pocket to do that. You're just gonna borrow enough money in addition to what you want to cover the fee and the stock. The question then is, is how much do you need to borrow? And this gets to be a little bit complicated because if you have a loan below $50,000 and you borrow money for the stock, that means that your stock requirement goes up. Since you borrow more money, the amount of stock you have to purchase goes up. Well, then if you have to borrow a little bit more to pay for that additional stock, then you have your stock goes up. Your stock goes up, the amount of money that you have to borrow goes up, then your stock requirement goes up. Do you see this circular problem? Well, we can solve for that. Okay, let's let P represent the loan principal. That's that amount that's gonna be stated on your contract with your bank. And let's let this L represent the amount of money that you actually need for whatever purchase you're going to be making. That's net of any stock and fee requirements. So it's just the amount of money that you wanted in the first place. And let's let this F represent the credit fee. So what that means is, is the amount of money that we're going to borrow, this P, from the farm credit system, 
is the amount of money that we needed in the first place, plus we're going to borrow enough for the stock, plus we're going to borrow some for the fee. Let's take this equation and remember from your previous slide that if the loan amount is less than $50,000, then to calculate the amount of money, we take the principal amount and we multiply it by the percent stock requirement. Again, I've put this caveat, it's only needed if your principal you're borrowing is less than $50,000. Otherwise, this is easy to solve for. Okay, next, let's divide this percentage stock times the principal from both sides. And then let's factor out the P that's contained in both components on the left-hand side. And then we're going to divide both sides by one minus this percentage stock requirement. And voila, we now have solved our circular problem. Now we know precisely what we need to borrow. Looking at this, in the problem, we said that we need to borrow $100 and looking back at the data form, you can see that the fee that we specified was $3 and that the stock requirement at the Production Credit Association is 2%. We plug these numbers in and we see that we need to borrow $105.10. $100 for what we needed and extra for the fee and the stock requirement. To make sure this works out, the stock requirement is 2% of the principal. So we have to buy $2.10 worth of stock to be able to borrow the $105.10 from the farm credit system. Let's make sure that we take home what we wanted. Well, we're borrowing $105.10. We're paying back the bank $3 in fees and $2.10 in stocks. We do the arithmetic and sure enough, it comes out to be $100. If you look back at bank A, B, and C, that was our take home. That's how much we borrowed from the bank. So this formula works. Now looking at the PCA to lay out the cash flows, we're borrowing $105.10. The contractual rate is 10%. There's only two payments because this is a fully amortized loan with annual payments, conversion period equal to one. So to calculate the payment, we plug this into our calculator and it comes out to $60.56 per year. So the amount of money that we borrow is $105.10. We're going to pay that back over two years at $60.56 per year. The fee was $3, the stock was $2.10. So we sum up these columns and we see that our net cash flow is, is we take home $100 today. We're going to pay $60.56 at the end of the first year Notice at the end of the second year is that we get that stock back. When we terminate, when we culminate the loan, the farm credit system is going to give us back that non-earning stock. So our payment, you can see, in that last year is reduced by the stock. So it's only $58.46. Now, we created this chart so that we can then calculate the actuarial rate we basically want to find the rate that makes the present value of the cash inflows equal to the present value of the cash outflows. To do that, look at the previous chart and here you can see that we're going to bring back the first payment to the present and the second payment to the present. The first payment we're discounting back one period and second payment back two periods. What is the rate that makes those equal? Now we could search for those rates, just choosing randomly at 10%, and we see that in this case at 10% the outflows are greater than the inflows, so we raise the rate to 14. We see the inflows are greater than the outflows, so we drop it, and we continue to do that. Systematically, we see that it's somewhere between 12 and 13 percent. At 12.52 percent, we see that they're equal. We can also solve this using the calculator. We have to look at this and make sure we do it right. Now, if we keep the uh, payments uniform and then look at a single sum amount at the end, then this fits the way we can use our calculators. 
I'm going back to the table. Instead of using the net cash flow, what I'm going to do, we're using the net cash flow at time zero. Then we're going to use the uniform annuity. And then we're going to look at that ending payment. Now, if you think about it, this looks a lot like what we did with the bonds. Now, you're obviously welcome to do it by the search procedure, but if you understand that on this timeline that we have the net money that we're bringing home from the loan, and we're going to have a uniform annuity that represents the fully amortized loan payment, and we're going to put as a positive amount the stock at the end of the loan. And what that gives us then is we're trying to find the rate then that finds the present value of the cash inflows equal to the present value of the cash outflow. One of the things that's different, however, that you have to watch for and where you'll make a mistake, and you can try this on your calculators now if you want, is that when we were doing the bond, the signs for the coupon payment and the uh, par value at the end had the same signs because they were both cash inflows. In this case, the payment is a cash outflow, but this stock requirement is a cash inflow, so the signs are different. So you've got to watch the signs or you're not going to get the right answer. We plug this into our calculator then, the 2N, the $100 present value, put a negative $60.56 for the payment, but put a positive $2.10 for the future value and we compute it and it comes out to 12.52%, the same as we calculated through the more tedious process using the search method. Okay, to calculate the APR is easy because it's annual payments. We just multiply the actual rate by one, so it stays at 12.52%. The effective rate is easy because, again, the uh, conversion periods are one, so the effective rate is the same as the APR at 12.52%. And we have now finished our chart. Now, looking at the effective rates, and we have to use the effective rates because the conversion periods per year over all four are different. So based on the effective rate, which do we choose? B and C. So B and C have the least cost loans. So how do you choose between B and C? What does that depend on? It depends on the firm's liquidity. If liquidity is not a problem and you want to reduce the amount of interest that you pay over the life of that loan, you're going to go with bank C. But if liquidity is an issue, then you may choose bank B because you don't have to pay it off as fast.